So, do we remember when we were doing Temple Mine, and you made a comment to the effect of something like, it had puzzles that were more advanced than just lighting torches to open a door? It sounds like we're about to regress, is, is, the, is the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm afraid I have some bad news for you. I also have some good news for you. Uh, this game might feature lighting torches to open doors, but like everything else that it does, it implements this feature in pretty much the most cross-code way imaginable. So I think, all in all, we're still going to be pretty pleased with it. Here's our first new, uh, toy I'm gonna go with. You might actually remember this one from the one guy's house. There was a bubble there, we can do fire things with it, and we can do neutral things with it. And I'm overthinking the hell out of this puzzle because I didn't realise that that little pillar over there, um, had a half elevation, so you could just jump up onto it. Yeah. But this one you actually do need to mess with a bit. So as ever, we're starting a uh, somewhat resembling same. And we're going to very, very slowly increment up. And then we're going to continue. And then we're going to continue. And then we're going to continue. I have to say that this is um, a bit more than I expected for the first time you encounter a puzzle element. Oh, yeah, like, every time we go into a new dungeon, the the game's interpretation of what what it considers to be a gentle introduction with the gloves still on just inches a, a tiny little bit further up each time. It's it's great, it's it's like the frog boiling of puzzle difficulty. Like, we're already on like four different discrete things we have to do to light all of these torches. Torch lighting involves multiple ricochets and multiple elements. And multiple elevations. I absolutely love it. It's the best. This fucking game. Here's some new enemies. I fucking hate these things. Or at least I did until about a, a couple rooms later when I finally actually figured out how to fight them. Their big deal was that they throw bubbles at you. And when they throw bubbles at you, they elevate themselves a tiny bit off the ground. Such that if you do the incredibly obvious thing, and counter the bubble with fire, it will just miss them. Okay. It's a great time. That said, if you don't do the incredibly obvious thing, if you delay the bubble a bit with neutral shots and then hit it with fire, it will fuck them up. And like, seriously, the, the, the hitbox on the steam explosion is a tiny bit miserly. I was gonna say, that... the hitbox on that steam looks... incredibly stingy. It could be better. It probably doesn't help that the bubble is moving directly away from where it got shot. Like, I don't know, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff. Do you like pillars that can change the elevation of your shot? Oh god, I really hope you like pillars that change the elevation of your shot, because, uh... Well... See for yourself. That's, uh... That's a lot. We're escalating. I'm, uh, I've gotta say, not generally a fan of this, just immediately at first glance. Yeah, we, um, we have shared opinions previously regarding uh, crosscode and the ease of passing elevations at the best of times. 
the good news is that when these pillars are around, just by the, the nature of how they work and what they look like, you pretty much always have a pretty good reference point in both elevations that you're working in. So it sounds like it could be real bad, but just by the virtue of what they do, they kind of come back around and work pretty well. You might have figured out, by the way, how to get the chest in this room. Uh, I'm not going to figure that out until after I finish this dungeon and come back and do the cleanup. But feel free to claim a cookie if you figured it out. We absolutely could get it right now. So we have new enemies, and we have pillars that change the elevation of your shots. But what if we combine the two? I mean, we could not. Just, just eyeball that one. We could not. It is indeed technically within the realm of possibility to not. But need I remind you that this is crosscode, and crosscode does not not. This is admittedly true. Anyway, I can't hate these guys too much because they're moths and they love lamp. So you light the lamp and it just sits on the lamp and you send a fire shot up the lamp and it just immediately breaks it. Yeah, no, that that looks that looked that looked quite quite reasonable, all things considered. Also, you can just sit there and uh, spam shots into the lamp. Um, the they these pillars will elevate both your charge shots and your regular shots. So you can also just sit there shooting fire shots at them continuously until their hit points reach zero. It's valid. I guess I should note that uh, the only real caveat to those things is that you have to have an element active. They will not do anything to neutral shots. Anyway, this is a dungeon with multi-elevations and sand, so you had to know this was coming. Hmm. It's going to take me an embarrassingly long time to spot the button off the screen left right now. But I think I managed to do an excellent job at massively overthinking this room anyway. We're going to see what comes of that later. But this is actually a big branching path. There's like four different places we can go from here, so... Um, let's just keep moving and let's keep identifying cool new stuff to do. Are you keeping count of the number of new nifty elements we've had to deal with so far? I've kind of lost count. So yeah, are you good at timing? I am not good at timing. Naturally, these blocks of water have a bunch of different behaviours that correspond to different element stuff. You can freeze them with water, or you can evaporate them with fire. And we are, of course, going to have to do all of the above. And by the way, those frozen blocks, they are frozen. They are ice. You will slip on them. Oh, I... I see. Here's a little brain moment. Oh, by the way, the water will also um, kill you if you touch it. I mean, not kill you, it will, it will respawn you, but you know what I mean. It's real fun stuff, is what I'm saying. And yeah, the steam explosion. Suddenly, the hitbox on it is massive. Now, of course, these things are still here. Maybe you forgot about them. Crosscode didn't.
and you know these are gonna get exponentially meaner. This isn't as bad as it looks, by the way. Um, only the, the, the wavy textured sand is actually quicksand. Yeah. But it took me a little bit to figure that out. Yeah, I was gonna say, my immediate thought on this was that, oh, well, this looks like absolute fucking ass. Yeah. Also, these jellyfish can uh, charge at you and they will deal a decent amount of damage. And that charging attack cannot be blocked. I don't know why it seems like it should be able to be blocked, but I guess it kind of works like a command grab. It's a pain. See there I tried to block it and it just didn't work. And here's where I figured out how to actually fight these things. It really is as simple as just shooting the thing with one normal shot before the fire one. You do that, and it's pretty much, unless something else goes wrong, like you happen to get attacked by a different one at the same time, you are getting that counter in. I say that as I am making a complete meal of this fight, but... Ah, uh, whatever. The only hit point that matters is, is the final one. I don't know if it's just these enemies, or this game's greater combat feel in general, but I, uh, I am increasingly getting the feeling that crosscode and combat in general doesn't ha it doesn't have a great grasp on what's reasonable to expect the player to do. Well, it goes up and down, really. Like, the thing is, this is a dungeon, and we're fighting dungeon enemies. We will more or less... Like, I, I might be... I don't know if I'm misremembering some things, but I'm pretty sure that we only ever see these guys in a dungeon. And there are other dungeons with other enemies that we will only see in those dungeons. And the dungeon enemies tend to just be more puzzly. As a rule. There were the Maroon Valley guys, they all had gimmicks, but like these guys, these guys are on a different level. Right, like, it's not just that the enemy has gimmicks though, it's that that gimmick is kind of inscrutable and takes, it's, it, well, I don't want to say it's hard, to, I would say it's extremely obnoxious to execute, maybe, is the word I'm looking for here. It probably looks a bit worse than it actually is. Like, despite how <laughs> what I was making it look like, once you actually, once it even occurs to you to try uh, switching to neutral for one shot and then back to fire from another shot, it is surprisingly natural to actually do in execution. At least that's what I think. Now this one's kind of rude. We hit these things with fire to get the ice block to appear, now we also have to hit them with ice. But the ice block only stays there while all of the pillars are lit with fire. Which means we got to be careful about how we do these shots. not even a very difficult puzzle, it's just kind of rude. And I like it. Very game design. Tronny, this is not the time. I 
I see we're agreed. That was that was that was one of his better moments. I think. Yeah. Really, more of a fun fact machine rather than a nitpick machine. So yeah, I hope you remember that that teleporter exists. It can save you a decent bit of time if you find yourself having to uh, traverse that stretch. Honestly, I think at this point my biggest concern with this dungeon is that I have no idea. Like, I don't feel like I have any idea where we actually are in the dungeon. Hmm. Yeah, this is probably, now that I think about it, the most, uh, it is the most vertical dungeon. It, it is the dungeon with the most floors. And it is the dungeon with the most moving between floors, which you'd think would just be a natural consequence of having the most floors. Very pleased with that shot, by the way. Look how much on that edge I'm standing. Uh, the good news about Fajro Temple is that you might recall that, uh, it's named the Hourglass Temple in lore. And it's called that because it literally has the profile of an hourglass. Like, it's got five floors, and it goes a big floor, medium floor, small floor, medium floor, big floor. And the whole thing is pretty much... Uh, half of the dungeon is the first two floors. The third floor is just the halfway point. And the second half of the dungeon is the top two floors. So there's only actually two floors, and you're basically either at the front or the back when you're on one of those floors. I'm not showing the map very much, but that's probably uh, gonna do more for people feeling like they're getting lost just watching this. Maybe I could have shown the map a little bit more. But you are assured that it's not actually that difficult to find your way around this one. Now make all these shots. It took me a bit longer than I'm really pleased with to notice the opportunities for for cornering on these on these things. I think it's just a problem that this game has in general with uh, this kind of 3D design and this kind of shaped walls is that sometimes it's just real difficult to notice that there's corners in a place. Yeah, I could definitely see... I would have taken a very long time on this room trying to figure out how the fuck to do these shots. But once you get on its wavelength, it's pretty straightforward, actually. Once again, I kind of make a bit of a meal of this, but... You can pretty much make most trick shots in this game by standing in a handful of points that are usually pretty well indicated and making a small number of shots that always go in cardinal directions and always bounce off of corners. It's just... you forget that sometimes. Fighting these guys in a, any kind of an open room where you can't um, you can't pursue them over pits always makes things a bit weird because they like to they like to get stunned in places where you can't hit them with your big numbery melee techs, and that's kind of irritating. good news, I guess, about navigating this place is that a lot of the rooms are pretty recognisable, and the, the path around, there's, there's a left path and there's a right path. It's a lot simpler than it looks like it should feel to actually do. And then there's all this stuff. Most of this is actually optional, although uh, some of it, some of it is for keys. All the rooms off to the side here have keys in them, and then there's the chests. We'll get that one later. 
I'm not sure why this room is called Test of Memory, although I think it's because you're fighting uh, enemies from Maroon Valley rather than the temple enemies. So it's like, hey, do you remember how to fight sharks? I remember how to fight sharks. I feel like if you got this far, you would be very hard-pressed to not know how to fight sharks at this point. Mm. Regardless of... Regardless of how much you may enjoy doing so. Yeah. I mean, it's possible in the very general case that uh, you can lean on party members to do stuff, but not for sharks. The party members are not great at fighting sharks. By the way, I never appreciated really how um, having a, a firing a, a key shot makes your shots travel slower. Also, I never appreciated that um, sinking in the sand there would take me outside that door. But here we go. Make a note of the chest in this room. This is another one of the two that I'm going to miss in our run through this temple. And it took me, I counted, this is a measurement, I'm basing this off of the literal video that I took. It took me literally half an hour to find this chest again. Like, I thought I was doing methodical sweeps of the entire temple, I was looking, look, there, there was a chest somewhere, I remember it. It was in one of these rooms. Could not find it. I, I just wanted you to know that doesn't speak great of this, uh, this game's, this, uh, dungeon's navigability? I don't think that's actually a word, but I'm sure, I, I think you know what I mean, though. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it probably is a word, just not one that anybody actually ever uses. But yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff in this dungeon, and a lot of it is, like, you know, the... The aesthetics of the rooms don't really change a whole lot, although, although the contents of them are usually pretty memorable. It's just that uh, trying to find the one room with a chest in it is a bit of an ordeal. I'm not really sure what I would do about that other than uh, making sure to have this stuff indicated on maps from the start. Anyway, this room looks frankly horrific when you do it, but it's got a flow to it. No, that one's all right. That was that was pretty easy to figure out what you had to do. There's there's a lot of puzzles in this game that are like they look really complicated. Sometimes they actually are quite complicated, but they have this way of working out. They've got that whole thread unraveling vibe to them. I feel like it's one of those like invisible hand of the designer things. I feel like it's it's pretty obvious that a lot of work went into these things. And I feel like the actual amount of work that went into them is even more than it seems. Here's the map, by the way. These floors are all very square. No, there is nothing in the lower right corner. I don't know why. Just kind of an anomaly. This is pretty much the last remaining issue. That's how you were supposed to do that shot, by the way. Not the, the weird, slightly cheating way that I, that I did at the start. I mean, you call it cheating. I just left that in. You call it cheating, but honestly, that was a pretty... It was a pretty sick shot. It was. I will always respect this game for just allowing you to get away with the weird shots. If you can figure them out. It's one of the things that's just like... It's modern video games, like... They have this stuff that it's got. We 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 obviously are drawing a lot of Zelda comparisons when we talk about this game's dungeons, but uh, 
one of the, one of the things that didn't really start becoming uh, much of a deal until very late on, like, uh, like Breath of the Wild Zeldas, is they had these puzzles in them that were, like, they were a way, they had an intended solution, but the whole game was open enough that there were so many ways that you could come at these puzzles sideways. Crosscode is kind of like the same content, just writ smaller. And I really like that about it. Here's a mini-boss. Guess how we hurt him. Don't think too hard, though. Like the Tims, um, he has a different moveset when you set him on fire, but he tends not to live long enough after that to really show most of it off. Most of the challenge in this fight is just surviving this bit. Yeah, I, I can see that he did not like that very much. He did not. Accordingly, the second phase is, you know, where the actual danger goes. He doesn't actually get that many new moves, he just eliminates most of the platforms. The one new move he does get is he starts using his spike tentacle arm things to just start directly harassing you while you're on the platforms. Like this. It's actually a lot easier to dodge than I make it look. I just keep forgetting that most of the time when this game wants you to dodge, it wants you to dodge twice. If you remember that, you basically need never actually take a hit in this fight. A lot of the time it seems like hitting him with the bubbles isn't doing anything, but I think that's just due to technicalities with how the game displays the, the break meter. See, here he goes. Technically very dangerous, but well, he can't pose a threat if he's dead. Yeah. No real strong opinions on that one. The bubble thing seemed a bit janky, but there were plenty of them to go around, so... Yeah. It works. I really like Crosscode's bosses, on the whole. The worst ones are just... decent. Here's a new element. And here is a third skill tree for us to play with. Normally it would be my instinct to just immediately rush ahead and, like, get a couple of nodes on this tree, but it occurred to me that the par time for the first half of this dungeon is actually 60 minutes, and we're at like 20, 28 minutes right now. So I took the opportunity to actually poke around this tree a bit. We've got our guard art that's basically recoil trumpet, but with ice. We've got a big shot that does a big ice explosion, or a lot of small shots that do a lot of damage. Standard tech dichotomy. And then we've got some other thing that doesn't matter, and also Frozen Star. The one melee art that absolutely everybody remembers, because it does an absolutely obscene amount of damage. At the cost of, you know... I do like the big number. Big number is the most important number. It is a big number. The ice tree on the whole has a lot of defensive stats on it. And also a, a surprisingly low amount of health regen. It has the least health regen of any of the elements. Mostly it's about being a big old tanky tank. Very fitting with the whole, you know, mighty glacier trope. On the whole, this game's skill trees are pretty uncomplicated. I like that about them. They kind of look a bit overwhelming, but there's really not very much to them. Like a lot of things in this game, they just... they just work out. And no, we can't do anything else in this room until we go outside and come back in. This is the halfway point. Citroen will always beat us here. I, I don't know how he does it. 
Uh, like I said, Emily will get here after 60 minutes. But the real weird thing is that this does not matter at all. The only thing that actually matters is who makes it to the end first, and the second timer is always separate from the start timer, so, like, game design. So wait, hang on, you said that Emily gets here after 60 minutes? Yep. But the part time for the dungeon is 50 minutes? Yep. The part time actually only refers to the second half. I see. Game design. 